All right, let's make this happen here. <laughs> hey, folks, <laughs> did you hear that, that gong? I, I liked it, man. That was that was a cool way to start it. Good way to kick it off. Yeah, last last week it went off, and uh, my friend, my my buddy on the on the screen, didn't even didn't hear it, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> it was. But, I like and, it. Anyway, hey, folks, I've got a Greg Roulette here on the screen with me. Um, I'm really happy to have you here, Greg. Thanks a lot for popping on. Appreciate it. For those of you who don't know who Greg is, um, he's an Emmy award-winning producer, uh, best-selling author, and media expert. He works with experts of all sorts, uh, thought leaders, entrepreneurs, literally around the world, um, using this thing called new media, which we'll pop into and dive into a little bit. Uh, direct response, personality-driven marketing, um, I'm sure different tests and things like that. So uh, he's the founder of ambitious.com. Um, I've got my planner right here, right there. Nice. <laughs> and Velocity as well. So, hey, Greg, how you doing today? I'm doing amazing, man. Thanks for uh, putting this together and uh, looking forward to talking today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I appreciate you popping on over here. Um, so really quick, just to get into, you know, some, some background stuff. Um, Give us a little bit of background besides what I was able to cover in 30 seconds. Yeah, well, the next 30 seconds uh, is the fun 30 seconds. So I came out of the uh, I came out of the music industry. Uh, I was a rapper in a rock band, toured the country for about 10 years. Um, had a recording studio in my dorm at the University of Central Florida, which paid for college for the the two or three years that I went to college. Uh, had everyone in my dorm room from Bone Thugs and Harmony to you know Trick Daddy to a lot of the you know rappers in, in and around the state of Florida. It was an amazing uh, time and took everything that I learned in the music industry and started bringing it over to entrepreneurs because that's what we do as musicians. Like we use media, right? We use music uh, that is the product, but we also use media to grow our business, right? So we have you know songs that we put out to the radio, we have singles, we have MP3s, we have videos that promote that. And, uh, you know, just discovered that business owners can do the exact same thing. Like, why can't a dentist have a music video that promotes his service? And he might not <laughs> use like a music video in the in you know, like Taylor Swift dancing around or whatever. Um, but how can they use, you know, a high production, high quality video that generates patience that brings in new leads, things like that. And so we took a lot of what we took from the entertainment industry, brought it into the business world. And as you said, uh, it's been 11 years now uh, that we've had different versions of our agency uh, and now helping people really uh, use media to grow a business. Uh, now we, we call it a little bit like velocity. We want, we want people to do it fast because with the tools that are available out there, like what we're doing right now, like this didn't yeah. exist. Like when I was in the music industry 10 years ago, if you wanted to do like a live stream, like you had to go to a TV studio and had to like beg them for TV time. Like now, like, we're just two dudes on like laptops talking to each other and uh, sure. it's, it's phenomenal. And then when you jumpstart that with advertising and other mediums to distribute your content, you can get in front of tens of thousands, millions of people. But here's the trick. You don't need tens of thousands or millions of people to move the needle, right? Like most businesses, if you just got a handful of people who genuinely want to buy your products and services, you'll have a really, really good business and a really good life. So uh, that's a, that's the cliff note version, rapper, rock band, media guy, helping business owners. So that's a, that, that's a little bit of the history there. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. I just got done listening to an audiobook. And I have, I have I don't know about you. I have a tough time calling audiobooks audiobooks because I'm used to, you know, a book. Um, but I was listening to uh 30 days what living living with the seal. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was um David Goggins I figured out was a seal because I read his book prior to that. But the guy who wrote that, and I can't remember his name off the top of my brain. Jesse Isler. Yeah, thank you. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah, I figured you maybe, maybe you guys uh, know each other somehow too, maybe. I mean, because that was uh, his background was he kind of fumbled into rapping. Yeah, he fumbled into rapping, fumbled into creating a, a, a coconut water beverage company yeah. before it was cool, sold it for uh, a ton of money, uh, ended up uh, as a partial owner of the uh, Atlanta Hawks. Uh, oh, really? Mary, yeah. So just, uh, yeah. And uh, his wife is Sarah Blakely, who started Spanx, uh, yeah. another billion dollar plus brand. So, you know, power couple, but yeah, started from the rap world. So, you know, yeah. us white rappers, you know, they, they look out for us. We're, 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 we're trouble. Ice tea and, uh, and, uh, and, or not iced tea, uh, vanilla, vanilla, ice. vanilla, vanilla <laughs> ice and Marky Mark and, you know, the funky right. bunch. So yeah, exactly. Oh, that's dating me at least. <laughs> <laughs> I know if you're in the industry, you have to have that stuff for like, um, for research. 
<laughs> exactly. So, so you can know what not to do. Um, so, hey, so let's just jump into it and talk a little bit about what this whole new media is, what you mean by that, you know, video, audio, what, what exactly do you mean by that? Yeah, I mean that uh, all of us today, if we sell product services, and I don't care what it is, if you're selling financial advice, if you're selling real estate, if you're selling coaching services, if you're a dentist, like no matter what it is that you're selling, the way that we sell today is through content. Think about how almost all discovery happens is a piece of content pops into the world, someone trips, fumbles, and discovers it, and then they learn more about your program, product, or service. The thing that's changed over the last you know decade plus is that no longer, I was joking earlier about you know the music stuff, is like if I wanted to get my song out to the world, I had to you know meet a, a radio programming person. He had mm -hmm. to sell his his director on it, then he had to sell the local DJ on it, and then they had to, you know, like there was this chain of command in order to get your song on the radio. Now all of that has been obviously disrupted. This is nothing new, is that if I feel like shooting a video today, I pull out one of these guys and I hit record and I hit publish and it's on YouTube, it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram, it's on LinkedIn, it's on Twitter, it's on Twitch, it's on you know Snapchat, it's on you know uh, TikTok, it's, it's wherever you want it to go. There's no middlemen anymore. And that gives a lot of power to people like me and people like you and people like who's watching this right now is that we have control over what gets said about us, about when right. it gets said, about how it gets said. And, you know, it's it's really allowed us to take control of our business and not have that middleman there. And what's really interesting about that is that the businesses who have taken advantage of that have really succeeded. And the ones who are still, you know, it's it's really funny. I've been talking about this for 10 years, right? Like this isn't the first conversation I've had on this, sure. but yet there are business owners who are watching this right now who have never filmed a video about their business and put it online, who have never written an Instagram post, you know, taken a picture of their product or their service or whatever it is and put it online. There are people who have never written an email to their customers or like it, it boggles my mind, which also means that there is still a huge opportunity to do this. Yeah, that, for sure. that even with all the content out there, there's still room for you. I mean, uh, I have conversations with financial advisors nearly every day, and I'll, I'll reference them a bunch and real estate agents and coaches, consultants. But you know, uh, financial advisors, like if I talk to a, a financial advisor in like Lincoln, Nebraska, and I'm like, hey, if you put out a video once a week, every single week for the next 52 weeks, you will be the only financial advisor that's doing that. And then yeah. if you advertise those videos, and let's spend two dollars a day. $5 a day, getting those videos out in front of your marketplace, every single person in your hometown will know who you are within a year. Yeah. And there are no other financial advisors in Lincoln, Nebraska doing that. So you have a blue ocean opportunity. And it's just amazing to me what, op again, it's the opportunity that's still out there here today. So that's the that's the kind of the, the cliff note spiel on, on new media, sure. but it's really new distribution as opposed to new media. So not having to wake up and do the uh, the public TV at two in the morning like Dean Graziosi used to have to do, and, yeah. and hope you know that somebody pull out their their credit card and buy a Gensu knife. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you though, if if you had the means right now, infomercials A are hot, uh, but B TV time is super cheap because a lot of the big uh, of the big stations uh, don't have content right now because they're not producing new content because all the studios are shut down and production no, shut down. Yeah. Is that just in the current situation or is that current situation? Trend? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I, we did see an infomercial trend upwards go like over the past 12 to 18 months, like meaning infomercial starting to make a resurgence, but right. also because you can retarget, there's all kinds of way, you know, it's not, but, but with the COVID situation, as we're recording this uh, yeah. again, they don't have as much programming as they had before because all the studios are shut down. They can't create new shows, new content. And so there is uh, like the prices have gone down, but viewership has gone up because there's more people watching TV sure. right now. So uh, it's funny, right? Like, again, I don't think an infomercial is where most people should start, but if you have the means, it's interesting what's happening right now um, in that world. Yeah. Where, what, where do you see? Well, I, I'm not going to get that far ahead of us. Um, you know, cause you're talking about business like in Lincoln, Nebraska, you know, my dad owned a roofing company for years and I told him the same thing. I'm like, okay, you need to be on video straight up. I mean, and he'd been roofing since 1960, you well, know, probably about 66, 67. And he kept doing things the same old way, you know, yellow pages, phone book, word of mouth, all of that stuff, never really got into video. And I kept telling him over and over, if you position yourself with video, you will be an expert. You're the expert, but yeah. you're not the expert. 
So one of his big concerns was he didn't want to give away too much stuff. He didn't want to be stolen from. What kind of advice would you have for somebody in a, in a small, small business in a local or small, small community? And I'm, I'm in San Antonio, so to me, Lincoln's yeah. pretty small. But, you know, say a community of 50,000 people. Does I think someone sense? like that has, yeah. So that person, like your dad, has the 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 easiest path to becoming the expert or the celebrity or the whatever in his marketplace because right. he has less of an audience, right? Like again, fifty thousand people. If we do, I can't do math, right? But if you advertise your videos on Facebook, it's about a penny to two pennies to get a video seen. So to get all fifty thousand people in a community to see your video. I mean, you're talking about a couple bucks a day in over 30 days, the majority of people in that town or every single one of them are going to see your stuff. Then sure. if you get an even to more targeting, because out of those 50,000, maybe only 12,000 are actual potential customers, people who actually own homes and not apartments, uh, you know, of the right age uh, in, a, in the certain neighborhoods. So you're not going to, I'm making this up, but like, you know, not in a, in a you know, you know, in an affluent neighborhood, things like that. So then it becomes even more valuable. Um, people ripping you off, like, people can just rip you off anyway. Right. Um, so I'm not, I'm not worried about that kind of stuff. What they can't rip off is you, your personality, the way you come across on camera, the likability, the relatability now in roofing. Now this is like a, a, a special niche, right? If you go out and start shooting videos, even if you give away the goods, there is like the slimmest chance in the world that another roofer is actually going to go out and do it. Yeah. Right. Like there's yeah. the the roofer who's like, man, I keep seeing Johnny's videos everywhere. We need to go do that. He's going to say, we need to go do that for like the next three years. And in those three <laughs> years, you're going to create a video a week. That's 150 videos you put out into the marketplace. You now own, you own the town, right? There, the is, there is no one. Um, and the thing is, it's not that we want to give away the trade secrets and things like that. What we want to do is we just want to answer questions that our marketplace has. So a roofer, and I'll use this as the example, but this is true for probably everyone who's listening. The biggest thing I think that stops people and the reason why we created the video planner is that they go, I have nothing to talk about. I'm just a roofer. All people want are quotes. That's all they want. They want to know yeah. how much is it going to cost to move my roof? When can you get started? But we have a lot more questions than that. We want to go deeper than that in, in our relationship with our roofer. You know, I just bought a new house when, you know, and, and, and I just got my inspection back and they're saying I need a new roof. Do I actually need it? You know, uh, we are thinking about selling our house. Should we fix the roof before we, before we sell, before we list the home? Um, you know, uh, we have this problem, like, like think about all the things that are going on in your mind and just answer those questions. Now, someone like right. your dad's probably been in business more than just yesterday. So he's probably done a gazillion roofs. Just start telling stories. Hey, here's a story about an issue that we came up in, into in this. If you live in this neighborhood, here's this kind of roof versus this kind of roof. Here's, uh, you know, here in Florida, obviously, you know, big, big roofing because of hurricanes and, and things like that. It, maybe in Nebraska, maybe they have tornadoes or different things to think about. So like there, and again, if you're only trying to shoot one video a week, you have so much material that, you know, you can be talking about this stuff forever. The second opportunity for someone like your dad in, in the roofing situation is who else might refer business to him that he can go and interview very much like you're interviewing me now. So if he's yeah. the roofing guy, can he go interview the, the, the contractor, right? Who's, you know, rebuilding homes or remodeling bathrooms or bedrooms or kitchens or whatever it is who might be like, you know, Oh, Hey, we're thinking about getting a roof done. Oh, you need to talk to this guy. Well, what if he had a show, be it a podcast, a video show using mm -hmm. something like this. And he interviewed all these people again, do one interview every week for a year. That's 52 interviews. That's 52 potential referral partners who are now yeah. sending you people all the time. Now, look, not all 52 are going to send you business, but what if just five did? Yeah. What if just five sent you regular business? That would be a slam dunk home run. The best thing you could ever do, because, you know, again, you and I are recording this right now. I love taking things like meta. This isn't costing us any money. It's just costing us time. It's taking yeah. an hour out of your day, an hour out of my day. You know, we're not paying Facebook right now where, you know, be live is a couple bucks a month, like relatively inexpensive. And, yeah. and so, you know, your dad now is able to have his own show that didn't cost him any money. He's not paying the local radio station. He's not paying the local TV station. And now he might have 52 referral partners. So sure. Two different angles there. One is you just direct the camera, you know, share, hey, this is Johnny and I want to share a cool roofing tip or become the host and host yeah. your own show. But either way, he now takes over that marketplace. And now look, that works for roofers, but it works for dentists. It works for coaches. It works for authors. It works for speed. Like this, it's the same formula. We just happen to be talking about roofers here because you brought it up and I can talk about that stuff all day.
<laughs> yeah, for sure. So um, that's in a small community. Now, what about, you know, a place like, well, like where I am? You know, I'm in San Antonio. It's the seventh largest city in the country. Um, 1.5 million people or something ridiculous like that. Uh, there's tons of competition. You know, I've got a, a chiropractor down the street from me and a chiropractor a couple miles away. They both do video. How do you, if you're, if you're in a larger market with more competition, how do you yeah. differentiate yourself? Yeah. So I'm a believer that the only real USP, the only real way to differentiate yourself is you, right? Because you can say, here's three ways to eliminate back pain. And the guy down the street is going to say, here's four ways to eliminate back pain. And the, the guy down the street is going to say, here's five ways to eliminate back pain. And now you're just like fighting over three, four, five ways, right? It's like, uh, if you remember the old infomercials, like nine minute abs, and then the guy comes out with eight minute abs and then seven right. minute abs. You know? and, <laughs> and so, so the, the content itself, what, what really differentiate yourself is you, right? And so I do an exercise and, and I'll share it with everybody right now. And it's who do you want to be known to? And what do you want to be known for? Those are the two really, really big things. So it's getting crystal clear on who your marketplace is. And I don't mean males 45 to 55 who have houses, right? Like the traditional marketing demographic. Are you talking, are you like normal avatar type of? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking a little deeper. So I like to think about okay. is, is a pocket of people that all have a similar problem, similar life experience that you can really help. So it's people with a, with let's, let's just use easy, easy thing for here is like back pain, right? But what kind of back pain? Is it back pain because of old age? Is it back pain because of sporting injuries? Is it back pain because of, uh, I have no idea, but it just showed up out of nowhere. Is it uh, back pain due to, you know, working conditions or these blue collar workers who, uh, you know, they may get beat up in the sun every single day and climbing up and down. This is my dad. He's an electrician climbing up and down ladders all day, every day. And he wakes up with that. Like, so finding this pocket of people that all have this shared experience and becoming the expert to them and solving their problem. And again, now we can then we can uh, merge it with yes. And they're 45 to 55, 55 year old guys who are skeptical of chiropractors who are, you know, this or that, who have never taken a vitamin in their entire life, right? Like the typical, you know, sure. meathead. Um, yeah. But, it, but it's, it's defining that. I'm going to assume that most people kind of know who that is. The second piece is probably is, is an exercise that I make every single one of my clients do right when they sign on board. Uh, and it's called, what do you want to be known for? All right. And so when we think about business, everyone's being like, so how are you unique? How are you different? How are you, you know, what's the unique piece of it? And, and when I was a musician, when I was, a uh, you know, trying to tour the country, when we first got started, we were trying to get gigs at just local venues throughout the state of Florida. And we'd always say like, yeah, we, we don't, we're so original. We don't sound like anybody. We're like a hip hop, funk, rock, jazz, you know, fusion. And the club promoter would be like, I literally have no idea what that means. So I, do, do I put you on the jazz night? Do I put you on the rock night? Do I put you on that? And therefore we got zero gigs. Sure. As, as soon as we said, oh, we kind of sound like Linkin Park and 311. They go, oh, we know Linkin Park. They're pretty cool. Hey, we'll put you on Tuesday night with this other band. And it changed everything instantly. Now, what was unique was when we got on stage and played, we had original songs and original material and original uh, our style and groove in the way that we did things. So in business, I want you to think of it the same way. What are the things that you want to be known for that your marketplace is genuinely looking for? What problem do you solve from your marketplace? Back pain. Now, how you treat the back pain can be unique. Your unique selling proposition, your unique mechanism, your unique uh, five-point system for you know making the spine feel better. Whatever you know, I'm obviously very doctorial here. Um, <laughs> you know, but uh, but you know what your unique method is how you solve that problem. But nobody woke up today going, you know what I really need? I need a five-step ninja back pain <laughs> system called the XYZ model. Like no, like every someone woke up today and they go, holy crap, I can't get out of bed. I need help. So are you? Yeah known as the holy crap i can't get out of back i can't get out of bed today guy right like that's might be what you want to be known for i need to get back to work because i have to uh you know get a paycheck this week can you help me to to get back to work this week right and again these are extreme cases but like sure. what do you want to be known for so uh i do an exercise um let's see if my pens actually work today uh where i have people draw this amazing graphic it's uh, uh you know very uh 
very powerful here. So it's this uh, <laughs> line from the top to the bottom and from the left to the right. So you have four boxes here, somewhere yep. over here, because I can't see myself on camera, um, four boxes. And so I want you to start thinking about the four things that you want to be known for, because I don't think that you're just one dimensional, right? And you might have different people that you serve. Those people might have different problems. You know, I, I get that all the time. Like, well, Greg, I, you know, we have different products and services. I'm like, great. But a high level, what are the four things that you want to be known for? So you might want to be known for, uh, again, like helping people to 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 walk around their house pain free. Like that's what I want to. I want to be known as the guy that helps people to walk around their house pain free. I want to be known as the 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 person who can uh, help people get back to work. I want to be known as uh, you know the healthy living person. Like it's a holistic approach to health. Like sure. whatever it is. So what are those four things? Now again, how you solve that is unique. But those four problems are problems that people woke up today and they need to pick up the phone and they need to call you. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create content that positions you as the person that is known for those things. So here's how I look at it. If you're a, a chiropractor, if you're a roofer, whatever it is, you have those four different quadrants, the four things you want to be known for. Well, start jotting down questions that people have. Start jotting down ideas. Start jotting down solutions. Start, uh, maybe there's something uh, in the local paper that was about like, uh, you know, uh, you know, San Antonio is the seventh largest state that has back pain, you know, whatever it is, right? A study comes out, um, you know, maybe there's uh, a new drug that just came out. Maybe it's, uh, you know, something about like, you know, does COVID affect your back pain? Like what, whatever that it is. So all of these timely topics. And so what you have is you have a bunch of ideas in each of the four quadrants. And then what I want you to do is once a month, I want you to pick one idea from quadrant one, one from quadrant two, one from quadrant three, and one from quadrant four. You're going to shoot four videos. You're going to do it direct to camera, just how we're doing it right now. So pull yeah. out your phone, your camera, whatever it is, and you're just going to be like, hey, you know, we've been thinking a lot about what's happening right now with COVID out there, and our patients are asking like, hey, you know, I have back pain. Should I even be visiting a chiropractor right now? Like, am I putting myself at risk by going to see a chiropractor? Like, again, whatever it was. And you just share a one, two, three minute video about that. And it doesn't matter once you have like, say you have like 10 ideas for quadrant one, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter which video you pick because they all position you as whatever you wanted to be known for in thing one. And now all of a sudden you have unlimited ideas and it's your unique you know, personality. It's your unique mechanism. It's your unique way of doing it, but it solves a problem that the marketplace actually wants to pay for. And so, yeah. you know, again, looping back to the original question was how do you stand out in a town like that? It's, we don't want to stand out to everyone in San Antonio. We want to stand out to the 20,000, 30,000 people with a specific problem that you can solve. And we want to be known as the, the biggest, the baddest, the best person just to those people. And we're going to do it just the way that I described, putting out a video a week on a topic that positions you as the guy. You're going to make an offer at the end of every single one of those videos, and you're going to do it consistently. You're not going to get 100 patients after the first video that you shoot right? But doing a hundred videos is going to make sure that you have patients who are like, man, Brian, I've seen like so many of your videos, man. Like, you know, I saw like, you know, I, I just watched like nine of your videos yesterday. Like, you know, and that's, what's going to happen over time. So anyway, yeah. that was a that's, long tirade there. But. No, totally. And I'm thinking as you're saying that it's like, okay, well, nobody came to my first couple of videos. What the heck? But what people a lot of times don't get, you know, it's not like TV where once the commercial's over, the commercial's over, this stuff sits on the internet forever. I was watching a video the other day from like 2013. I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then I saw what the date was. Yeah. Like, wow, that's kind of cool. It's outdated, but it's still relevant. You know, so once that's put up, it's there forever for people to reference, um, which is which is cool. So like you say, you know, somebody, Hey, you know, I watched nine, 10 videos of yours in a row. They binge watched my videos. <laughs> it's a great feeling. So, cool. yeah. King or whatever, but. <laughs> well, and so here's the other thing, right? As a, as a chiropractor, going back to that example, you sure. don't need 800 new patients next week. Right? right. So if you had a video, a hundred people watched it and two became prospects, that's a win. From yeah. a one minute video that you posted on Facebook. And if you use it using the methodology that we're talking about, using kind of an outline and having a call to action, that's what's possible. You don't need, you know, for, you know, and also like you're in San Antonio, you don't need somebody in Los Angeles watching your video, right? It does you literally, it does you no good. Does it like your ego is like, oh, look at all those views I got. But look, you can't take views to the bank. The only thing you can take to the bank are prospects oh, yeah. and yeah. clients. And so I think there's this delusion that like, oh man, only 80 people saw my video. Well, those are 80 human beings. And if all 80 of those humans lived in San Antonio and have back problems, 
I would rather that than have 80,000 views of people who lived in New York City who are never going to come into my clinic. Yeah. Right. And sure. so, so you really got to wrap your head around why are we doing this in the first place? It's not to be a viral star. It's to grow your business. It's to get customers and clients. Yep. Yeah. And I come from um, when, I, when I retired from my sport because I, I raced bicycles at a, an elite level and um, I went into network marketing like so many athletes do because we're trained to be an athlete. We're not trained to have a job. Yeah. And what we were taught then was it's not the person that you're talking to directly, but it might be who they know knows. It could be three or four people down the line that actually comes in and becomes your client. You know, hey, I saw this guy in, you know, in Tampa, and I might be four four generations from the first person watching the video, you know. Yeah. So it is it is one of those things where you just don't know when or where or who um, is going to come into contact with you. Uh, Greg, what's, what, what are hangups? What are things that keep yeah. people from doing videos? Because I mean, obviously doing videos, especially now is such a powerful thing. And I'm sure it's something that's going to be around for a long time. You know, I mean, we've been watching TV since the forties, so it's probably not going away anytime <laughs> soon. Not going anyway. Yeah. But what are, what are some of the things that are preventing people from getting on and doing a, doing a quick video? Yep. So I think number one and two are going to be kind of what we just talked about. I don't know what to say and I don't know how to say it. Right. And so coming up with those quadrants and then using something like the, the video planner, which we'll talk more about later, um, helps that. But I think the other hang up is the mental hang up. It's the fear, the anxiety, it's the stress of like actually being on camera because they say, you know what? I've never been on camera before. Uh, maybe they're self-conscious. Uh, maybe they don't like the way that they look. Maybe, uh, you know, they're like, oh, as soon as I go on Jenny Craig for a couple weeks, you know, then I'll be then I'll be ready to go. Um, and so th there's that side of it. And the biggest thing that I talk about to help people overcome some of this fear, this anxiety that they have of being on camera is everything that I just mentioned was about me. My the way that I look, the way that I'm going to talk. Do I don't like the focus is on me. The people who are the best at doing video, the focus is on the person watching. It's I need to put all of my focus, energy and attention on the viewer. And the viewer doesn't care that like, you know, I this is amazing. Like I got a, I got a, I had a guy come to the house today and gave me like a nice little haircut. So like it's the first time I'm not wearing a hat and yeah, you probably yeah, had the I same barber that. come over today. Yeah. So um, <laughs> but it is the, the first time I'm not wearing a hat in 6 weeks. And, um, but like my hair, it's not gelled. It's not done. It's not like, I don't care about any of that because I know that what I'm sharing with your audience here today is worth way more than them being like, Hey, that Greg guy didn't comb his hair today, you know? And <laughs> because it's not about me. Right. And at the end of the day, I don't, I don't necessarily care if everyone you know loves me, hates me, is indifferent. I know that what I'm sharing is going to help people. And when you have that mentality that I'm here to help, I'm here to serve, I'm here to add value because I really want to help you who's watching this right now. Yeah. All the fear and the anxiety go away because now it's not about me. When it's about you, your ego gets in the way. Your ego's scared that you're going to get a bad comment. Look, man, we're like we are uh, right now. We're spending close to four thousand dollars a day on ads, and whether that's a lot or a little, don't care. But you wouldn't believe the amount of comments that we get from people who just literally think that I'm the devil for selling a video <laughs> plan, right? And it's just like we have almost like a full time moderator right now who's like just deleting comments of people who just and if it was about me. In the beginning, like I, I would lose it. Like my whole, like I was like, guys, it's hey, it's a video planner. It's helpful. Like it's cool. Like you know. And uh, but I took such offense to all of that that uh, you know it would it would knock me out for the entire day because it was about me. But then I started looking at all right. Well, we sold a hundred video planners today. We had forty people join our Facebook group. We had two people join our coaching program. One of them just gave me an amazing testimonial. Like you switch the focus to helping people. And when you switch your focus to caring about people so much and helping them, knowing that you can't help everybody, right? That 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 should be a given. But when the focus is on the viewer, is on the person you can help, all of that fear and insecurity goes away because you stop thinking and you just start serving. Um, you know, the other thing going along with that is people think that they need things like teleprompters or they need scripts and they need because every word needs to be absolutely perfect, and that's yeah. not the case especially on social, because on social media, have you ever been like scrolling, 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 and then all of a sudden you saw a video is like, hi, today we're gonna talk about the three ways to help you with your back pain. Your back, like, no, no one is going to watch that video. So even though every word was right, 
and you said them like like it's not entertaining because people go on Facebook to make that connection, like yeah. flub like flubs and all. And so you know, even just in this conversation, like you and I, like we are not perfect. We're not doing things perfectly, but you care about your audience. I care about my audience. So we're going to deliver a really cool performance and people are going to excuse the fact that I said, um, like 86 times. They're going <laughs> to excuse the fact that I say like, and that I say, you know, and then I say, right. Like no one cares about that stuff because of the value that's coming from here and, and the fact yeah. that you're giving. So I think sure. if you, if you can make that switch from making it about you to about your audience, it makes video so much easier and you're going to overcome a lot of those fears. That makes total sense. Um, yeah. And uh, cause I was just thinking, you know, when we, when we make it all about ourselves, we can't even, I mean, it is all critical. You know, we're always doing that same exact thing of, Hey, you know, I'm not this or I'm not that, or why would anybody listen to me? And, you know, but if you turn it around and go, Hey, I'm, I'm actually trying to help somebody, you know, let's deliver something, good it doesn't even have to be perfect it just has to be good you know you can get better as you go along i made a comment in one of your in, in one of your um in, in the group the other day about that and somebody said how smooth you are on camera and and because you just came up with a couple of really quick you know 45 50 second video ideas yeah uh, and somebody's like, wow, that's just so smooth. And my comment to that was, it's not even a matter of being smooth. It's a matter of repetition and doing it and doing it. Yeah. So video number one, I promise you, video number one's going to suck. Video it will. It's probably yeah, going to suck. Video 50 will suck too, but in different ways. You know, you're going to, yeah. people will continue to improve on their, on their mistakes and make new ones. You know? Yep. So, yeah, I think um, I, I think that's the other side is they see people in their progression now. So yeah, uh, you know they see whoever whoever your person that you follow or emulate or look up to, whether that's you know a, a Gary V or Grant Cardone, if that's someone like a Russell Brunson, if that's someone uh, like a Tony Robbins or a Brendan Burchard or someone like myself, they see where we are now. They forget that. You know, if you go back and you look at uh, Gary V video number one, like his wine library, <laughs> episode one, it's dark. Yeah. It's it's in like his basement. He's got like a hoodie on. You can barely see him. He's like, hey, guys, it's Gary V, and I'm going to try some wine. And it's it's awful. It's unwatchable. And guess what? He's created like nine billion videos since then, and he becomes better. So repetition with video. The second thing that I don't want to neglect, because I think this is really important, is that you actually got to be good at what you do. Right. And I think sure. a lot of people are trying to take shortcuts. They're buying a course over the weekend that's teaching them how to be a life coach. And then on Tuesday, they're trying to actually be a life coach. And, you know, it, and it's not that I'm against that because I believe that people should take that step and they should try things. And they, you know, if that's your calling, go for it. Um, but, you know, if I'm like, you know, if you're my life coach, I'm like, all right, so how do I set a goal? And you're like, hold on, I got to look in the textbook to figure out how to set a goal. Like that means you got to put in the work and you got to be yeah. good at what you do. I'm yeah. able to come up with things on the fly because I've done this so many times and I work with people on the phone and guess the, 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 the way you do that is, you know, I used to have 10, 15 calls a day, right? Just talking to people. What's your problem? What do you need? How do you need help with? And like formulating this stuff, like this four quadrants thing came out of like, you know, so many clients being like, I don't like, you got to figure it out. And so, you know, again, we all start here, right? Like we all do. And I think people forget that and that's okay, but don't pretend that you're up here, right? Work your way up. And people like, uh, again, uh, the music industry example is the one I do with all the time. Everybody wants to be fans with the band when they only have 50 fans because they want to say, I knew Taylor Swift when she was playing the dive bar in Nashville to 30 people. They, they yeah. People want to support you on your way up. So you don't have to pretend like you're the biggest king of the mountain. You just be where you're at. Be authentic. Be real. And like if you're a three, you can help people who are twos and ones, but don't try and help the 10. Um you know, I think that's that's really powerful. And shout out to uh, Melissa and Steve, uh, and uh, you know, you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys. Um, I see you guys in sure. the corner of the comments. So, yeah, why don't we? Melissa just popped in a question on that, bringing in the the four quadrants. She wants to know how do we narrow down the four quadrants? Yeah. So, the first thing I'm going to say is what not to put in the quadrants. So I think this is really helpful. The first thing not to put in the quadrants 
is something that's an intangible. What I mean by intangible is you don't want to say customer service, or you don't want to say, I want to be known for my values, or I want to be known even like for my mission, like things like that. Those again, nobody woke up today and you know, if they needed to sell their house like tomorrow and they're looking for a real estate agent, they're not like, you know, honey, we really need to find a real estate agent who's got good values. I mean, <laughs> we want that, but what we want is like, what, what agent can sell our house tomorrow? Like who's the best agent who can sell our house tomorrow? They want to find the number one agent who's known as the person who can sell their house fast. Or maybe you want top dollar. Um, maybe you want someone who, uh, you know, specializes in, uh, you know, lakefront properties or like they want that person. Um, so the first thing is don't is get rid of the intangibles. The second thing is it's not your product. And, and we talked about this a little bit earlier when I started talking about the four quadrants is mostly we'll say, I want to be known for the PLX 87 system. Again, nobody woke up today wanting the PLX 87 system. What problem does the PLX 87 system solve? That's what you want to be known for. How you solve that problem is the PLX 87 system. I have no idea what a PLX 87 system is, by the way. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm making it up. Um, but the, the way that you solve the problem is through your system. Sure. So all four quadrants should be solving a problem that your marketplace has that you uniquely solve. So for uh, financial services, the example I give all the time, like a fun, one of my financial advisors wants to be known in one of his quadrants, saving money on taxes at retirement. That is what he wants to be known for because they, you know, a retiree right before he retires wakes up and he goes, oh crap, if I start drawing on my retirement accounts, I'm going to give 40% to uncle Sam. I have a million dollars saved. I don't want to give him $400,000. Who's the tax planner, the tax advisor that's going to help me to get there. So if he's known as the person who helps people save money on taxes at retirement, he'll get that client right? So the problem that he solves is the problem that the marketplace has. Now, how he does that is through a unique set of investments and annuities and this, and like these different things and like asset class. Like, again, I'm, I don't claim to be a financial advising expert, but you know, that's what it is. But the problem was taxes. Yeah. Another problem that this same advisor solves is social security because a problem that the marketplace has is when do I draw social security? What if social security isn't enough to provide for my retirement? Should I take it at 62 or should I wait till I'm 65? Because that, that changes the amount that you get on a monthly basis. So if the if, if someone goes and they're like, I need the social security expert, he's the expert. So it's about problems that your marketplace has, and that's going to help you to drill down. So it's not an intangible, it's not your product, it's the problem or the outcome. It's the problem that your marketplace has or the outcome that they want. That's sure. going to define your four quadrants. So Melissa, hopefully that was that was helpful there. Um, as kind of like the, analogy, the analogy of the drill in the hole, you know, it's like the guy's not looking for the drill, he's looking for the hole. Exactly. And what we sell is the drill because the drill fulfills the hole. Right. And every, everybody wants to sell the drill. And that's what everybody is selling. We're going to sell the hole, right? So, hey, if you have a giant hole in your house, you know, there are three things that you need to know to get that hole fixed fast. You know, like that, that's the angle that we want to come out all this with. So great yeah. analogy. Love it. Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Melissa also popped up another really good question. When, when you're doing videos, if you're doing a live video, um, do you do it from your, from your business page or from your personal page? What's, yeah, it's, what's a it, it's a great question. I am always going to say business page and for a multitude of reasons. One is it's against Facebook's terms and services to do business stuff on your personal page. I've never seen anybody shut down for doing something like that. But, uh, you know, as someone, I, again, we spend a lot of money on ads and do that. I don't want to give Facebook any reason to close my account whatsoever, yeah. ever, yeah. right? Like I want to stay on their good graces, whatever Facebook wants, I'm going to do, uh, because their platform like is, is a big driver of business. Um, so that's, that's thing one thing two is doing it on your business account allows you to do all of the stuff that's going to allow you to promote your business. Meaning you can run ads. And I think this is the biggest untapped opportunity for everybody who's watching this right now is go do a live video, you know, go four minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever it is. And then go to Facebook, go to their ads manager. Do not boost your post. Do not boost the post. That is yeah, so sure. if you come from the old school, uh, advertising realm, if you remember remnant space, Remnant space is what they sell like two days before they go to print and they go, oh crap, we need an ad on page 86. Let's just sell it for 50 bucks and get somebody in the, in the magazine. That's what that's what a boosted post is. It's remnant space. So when, Facebook doesn't have an, so when Facebook doesn't have an ad to serve, they're gonna put your ad there. So it's remnant space, it's crap, all right? Um, yep. Go to Facebook ads manager in your business manager. Just Google it, right? This, there's this amazing machine called Google and it'll show you how to do all of this stuff. <laughs> um, Facebook business manager, go to the ads manager and you wanna run either a video view campaign or an engagement campaign. What that means 
is you're gonna say, Facebook, I only want to pay you when you show my ad to the specific people I'm going to tell you to show it to. And right now, uh, especially during COVID, ad prices have dropped 50, 60% in a lot of different markets. You can get your video seen for about a penny a piece, maybe two pennies, maybe three, depends on your market and how big your audience is. But if you can get, you know, if you just want to reach retirees, 55 to 64 years old, right before they retire, who live within five miles of your office, maybe that's only 10,000 people for a penny a piece, you can get them to see your videos, man, that's, that is the best money you can spend on advertising bar none here today. Sure. Um, Fox, so, come on. Uh, that side now posting it on. So going, I see Melissa like coming in uh, with some more questions is you post it on your, your business page. And she says she has more followers on our personal page. Yeah. Pretty much almost all of us do you share it on your personal page. So, Hey, check out this video I just shared and share it to your personal page. Totally cool. Allowable all day long with terms of services, all of that. That's how you start to get some of your, your regular, uh, your folks on your personal page. Now, the other thing about personal page, and again, Melissa, I have no idea, you know, who your friends are and things like that. The majority of the people on my Facebook personal page aren't my customers. It's my friends from high school. It's like, they're never going to buy my stuff. So right. what you really need to think about is who, again, going back to the who, who is the audience? Who's going to buy my stuff? And so, yes, while you might have 3000 friends on your Facebook page, you know, you know, Nana Susan ain't buying your stuff, right? Um, you know, you, you know, so go to where the marketplace is. I think that that's really powerful. So I would focus, I would get the videos up on the, on the, on the business account. I would share them in your groups. If you have groups, I would share them on your personal page, but on the business account, it's going to give you all the analytics. It's going it, to like, there's just so many more benefits to doing it on the business page. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And it's, it's you know, you don't know your your personal friends, like you said, aren't necessarily going to be your customer. If there's somebody that you think that might be your customer, you can invite them to like your page and then they can choose whether or not to like it. Um, but I do that exact same thing. I'll post videos or whatever, or just articles, whatever on my business page and share them over my personal, you know, yep, some people exactly. like them, some people don't. And if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. So um hey let's talk about because i know your time's pretty tight this uh this afternoon let's chat a little bit about the uh the video planner um if you if you want yeah. what that's all about yeah so this is like it, it's crazy it is the simplest tool ever like i don't claim that this is like the, there's some content planners and things like that that are so complicated and so complex what i wanted to do is i wanted to get people to go from idea to outline to filming fast. And that's exactly what this video planner does. Um, mm. It's funny, again, as we, uh, you know, it, it's funny as we start to like scale this again, like I said, we're selling like uh, over 100 a day. So that if you do the math, it's like 3000 plus a month. And we're getting some people who, who get it. And they're like, this is too simple. This can't be it. And I go, no, literally, this is it. And I use it every single day. And I've been using it for 10 years. Uh, I used to do it, you know, just old school on a piece of paper like this. And I would write down 0.1, 0.2, 3 and then CTA. And I would throw this on the floor in front of me. And this is how I would shoot my videos for 10 years. And then I was like, but I can have one of my designers like design something fancy. Um, and then, and that's really <laughs> how this was born. We ran this as a, uh, a lead magnet. So something that we gave away for free, you know, just get her your name and email address. And we gave this one page video outline. Uh, and then I started seeing a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of folks doing these like planners, uh, one being Brendan Burchard. I got his high performance planner and I go, yep. Dang, that's so smart. Like that is so smart. Uh, and so I, I, that night, and so this goes back to the velocity stuff too. That night I called a designer buddy that I had and I said, Hey, I have this one page video outline. Can you turn this into a book for me? I'm going to come up with like 52 ideas by the end of the night tonight. And can we just lay it out and do a book? Uh, that was a Monday night on Wednesday. We had the whole thing designed laid out on Friday. We had our printed our first physical one. So from idea to printed in five days, and uh, uh, so now, and uh, I think we're at like nine or 10,000 copies of that thing that we've, we've gotten out into the marketplace. And the beauty of it is, is it, it overcomes all of the complexity of video. And it just says, here's an idea. And I don't care if you use my ideas or not, right? Those are just sure. prompts. Maybe they get you started. Some people are like, I only like 10 of them. I'm like, great, then shoot those 10 videos and then come up with your own ideas. Like yeah. it, it's but the bigger thing is, all right, cool. I need to shoot a video for uh, back pain. All right. Well, what's the big idea? What's the one big idea? So, in uh, so the difference between writing articles online and video is articles you always are writing what BuzzFeed popularized as like listicles, eighty-seven different smoothie recipes, right? Because those work really good for search engine optimization. There's a lot of post material on videos. That is the worst thing possible to do. 
Because if I said, you know, hey, how many of those 87 smoothie recipes do you remember? This is probably zero, right? But if you just did the one avocado banana smoothie recipe that changed my life, you would remember the avocado smoothie recipe. That's what we want to do in our videos. We want one idea. So, you know, again, it's easy uh, in like real estate, you know, uh, nine things to do before you sell your house. And I tell you, no, those are nine different videos. Sure. Do each single idea. Here's one way to get your house ready to be sold. Here's another idea. Now you have nine videos. If you put out one a week, that's nine weeks. That's, all, that's more than two months worth of stuff from one idea. Because in videos, you want clarity on one big idea. Then what I do is I just have three supporting parts, three things that support the video. That could be a story. It could be a stat. It could be a tip. It could be an action step. It could be, uh, you know, an article that you want to reference. It, like, it doesn't matter what it is. So, you know, here's, uh, you know, and so that's what we do. And then the final piece of it is the call to action. Never end a video without having a call to action because it is super hard to get someone to be scrolling their phone, scroll, 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 stop and watch your video. That alone is like Herculean. And then you got them to the end of the video and they're like, wow, that was awesome. And then the video ends and then Facebook auto plays a video about like cats or, you know, something <laughs> or whatever it is. And this doesn't mean that you're a used car salesman. This means like, hey, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like more cool tips about real estate in the San Antonio area, just go to mysanantoniorealestate.com and sign up for our free email list. Just that. Hey, you loved what I just shared because I know you just watched three minutes of a video about real estate or financial advising or whatever it is. You want more stuff like that? Do this. And that's yeah. all it is. And that is so powerful because they go, yeah, I do want more stuff like this. And the person who now watches your video for two, three minutes goes and takes that action. That is an amazing prospect. They have qualified themselves more than anyone else that you could possibly have who just stumbles upon your stuff because they took the time, found you out of the blue saw you, saw you on camera, which is in our brain, we can't distinguish the difference between Facebook video and TV, right? Our brain sure. just says, this guy's on video. Now you're the star, you're the expert. Yep. It positions you as the only one who can help solve that problem. And now they're going into your sales funnel. So yep. that's it, that's the video planner. One idea, three supporting parts and a call to action. And I guarantee you that if you just do the four quadrants, you pick one, two, three, four ideas, you outline four of them, maybe a minute each, uh, in the video planner, so four minutes, yep. you go film them, two minutes each, that's eight minutes, in 20 minutes, once a month, you have all of your content done. And uh, you know the next, uh, that's kind of the planner. But uh, one last point I digress, is everyone wants to go, I wanna go every day, I wanna do daily video. I love you for that, because I think that's very optimistic and ambitious of you, but after nine days, you will quit, right? Mm. You will, like it is, it is a fact. Um, everyone that I know, and every one of the big guys who do daily video, batch record. So even myself, when we were doing daily video, which we do not do anymore, I was shooting 30 videos in a half day and I was yeah. done for a month because I can't be creative every single day. Like I just yeah. can't. Um, I also have a business to run and I have a family to attend to and I have a life that I live. Yeah. And so batch recording will change your life because once a month, 20, 30 minutes, you can knock out an entire month's worth of stuff. And that's all you need, especially if you're using the advertising and distribution strategy we talked about. So. Sure. And That's then what I got. There are tools like I use. I use Restream. And if you do it right, you can actually put out a video on Restream and it plays it live. You know, so you can batch those out, schedule them ahead of time. Yeah. And say, I want to play on May 13th at four o'clock in the afternoon. That video will go live at four o'clock in the afternoon, May 13th. So yeah, there are ways, there are ways to make that batch, that batching work too. You mentioned though when you when you mentioned call to action, and I know we need to tighten this up here pretty quick. But you mentioned um, an email campaign. So, what's the best way for somebody to do a call to action? What's the best format to stay in contact with that person who pre-qualifies themselves? Talk to them a lot. Um, so, from a marketing perspective, not just video the biggest failure point for nearly every business owner is they don't do enough follow-up and they don't talk to their people enough is the fact that, you know, uh, you have an email newsletter and you send it to your list once a month and only 20% open it, right? Cause if you're getting 20% open rates, that's pretty darn good these days. So let's say you have a thousand people on your email list, 20% open, that's 200. That means once a month you talk to 200 people in your email list, right? Well, what about the other 29 days? 
that all your competitors are talking to them, not just your competitors, yeah. but everyone else that's vying for their money, um, their attention, their time. The more you stay on top of your marketplace, the better it's going to be. Now, your call to action doesn't have to be the same as my call to action. So I do all of my calls to action are into a sale. So I want people, my first interaction with them as a, as a prospect, I want them to purchase the ambitious video planner. And we priced it that way. It's 10 bucks, right? And it's because we have a lot of different products, programs, services that I want to qualify you. Well, A, I want to give you a ton of value because the planner is freaking awesome if you use it. But two, I want to qualify you because if you won't, if, you know, if you watched a bunch of my videos and you won't spend $10 to get something that's really, really cool, you're probably not going to want all the other stuff that I have. And that's cool. I'm, I'm, I made that decision and I'm, I'm okay with it. Some people are like, well, I need to get more free stuff from you. I'm like, all right, great. I have 9,000 videos on YouTube. I have a podcast with 600 episodes. I have a TV show on Amazon prime. You can watch more of me than you've ever wanted. And I have a free Facebook group, but to make that first interaction happen, I want $10 from you. That's sure. the decision I made. Now, Melissa or Steve or you might say, you know what? I'm, I don't want to do that. Maybe it's a webinar. Uh, maybe it's a, a, a free PDF or a checklist. I'm a big fan of tools. I love tool as the first step because it gives the appearance that they like might actually get a result. So the reason I think the video planner for me works really well as opposed to a book is like a book is like, ah, oh, crap, I got to read 200 pages. But a tool that I could fill out really quickly in two mm -hmm. minutes, three minutes, mm -hmm. means they go, oh, whoa, I might be able to shoot this video. I didn't have to read 300 pages about shooting a video. I just took an idea and I outlined a video. And so if you have that in your business, you know, a checklist, uh, a, a cheat sheet, an outline, uh, you know, an exercise that you can make people do, I think that's brilliant because you're getting results for your audience. And if you can get results for them with something that's either free or inexpensive, they go, huh, well, that was cool. What else do you got? And, and I think that works really well. And yes, you need to email them, right? So, you know, when someone comes into your world and they get that free tool, you email them immediately and say, hey, Melissa, here's your thing. The next day, hey, Melissa, did you get a chance to use the thing? Did you have any questions about the thing? By the way, if you want my help to fill out the thing, you can book a call with me. The next day, hey, just checking on you. We had, uh, you know, Marty got the thing a couple days ago and here's his awesome results. Did you get those awesome results? The next day, they get another email from you. Then you retarget them on Facebook. Like, again, there's so much that you can do. Yeah. But if you, if you don't talk to your customers, someone else will. And it's not just your competition. It's anybody who has access to talk to those people. So, you know, you might not be as aggressive as I am and do, you know, near daily emails, a lot of stuff like, but you have to do something to stay in front of your audience often. That is the most profitable thing that you can do in your business. Every day that I send an email out, I get a customer every day. And it's because I talk to my list. And at sure. the same time, I also make offers to them. Um, people are gun shy about making offers. You know, if you're a real estate agent and you're not saying, hey, are you ready to list your house? No one's ever going to list their house with you. If you're a coach and you never say, hey, can I coach you? You're never going to get coaching clients. You know, so you have to make that offer. And again, you don't have to be a used car salesman, make a huge pitch. You know, I've subliminally during the last 50 minutes we've been on, I've been like, I have the video planner, I have this program, like, but I haven't hard pitched any of that. And there's going to be somebody on this who goes, Hey, on that thing you were talking about, blah, blah, blah. Can I go check out blah, blah, blah. And that's how you do it. But at some point you got to stay in touch and you got to make offers. Um, you have to like, that's, that's yeah. hundred percent. Hey, I'm looking at the clock here. I know you got to run. Um, Really, really greatly appreciate your time, Greg, and sharing all of this amazing information and content with everybody. Um, what's a good way for people to get in touch with you so they can get, uh, you know, so they can be in direct contact and get these tools from you directly? Yeah, I think, um, you know, if, if anything I said was was cool and you liked it, uh, I'd love for you to check out the video planner. It's just theambitiousplanner.com. Um, we ship it anywhere in the world for 10 bucks, um, you know, and that's a that's total cost all in. Um, we have some other stuff that you'll see on the page and stuff. You can definitely grab them, but you don't have to. Um, but that's an amazing place. Um, the other place right now is we have a really cool Facebook group called Velocity. You just search on the Facebooks for Velocity. You'll see my big face uh, and you can join that. And uh, I'd love to have you in there. We do uh, a couple live and that's what I'm doing in like six minutes uh, as I'm going live in that group uh, to share stuff today. I think it's the uh, five personal branding mistakes. Uh, and that's what I'm going to be sharing there. Uh, and we'd love to have you guys in there. Uh, and I know like uh, Melissa and Steve who've been chiming in, they're members of the group. Uh, Steve's one of my coaching clients. Uh, so I get to I get to work with him a little more intimately, which is awesome. But yeah, theambitiousplanner.com or check out the Velocity Facebook group. That would be uh, that'd be amazing. And and more importantly, I just hope that they support you and maybe uh maybe tag us on social media and say you learned something cool today. That would uh that would mean uh that would mean the world to all of us.
For sure, for sure, for sure. Well, I, again, I appreciate your time, Greg. I'm going to let you run and, and get ready to do your thing. Um, I've had so much fun with this conversation. We could just keep going because there's so many. Day. Yeah. <laughs> there were things you kept touching on. I'm going, oh, that's a great idea. And then and then Melissa's over here talking about a funnel for CTA. And I'm going, oh, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> so exactly. um, again, I appreciate it. I'll let you run and uh, we'll do this again sometime, I hope. Thank you so much, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right, great. Take care.